Hello everyone, welcome to The Guitar Show. And in this video, we're gonna be looking at the effects of Eric Clapton. And guys, very quickly, I've got a Patreon site at patreon.com forward slash The Guitar Show, and I'll be doing the Ramon Goose Blues course, so check it out. But let's get to this video, and I'll see you at the end. Hi guys, I'm first gonna mention Eric's recording with John Mel's Blues Breakers when they went in to record at Decca London in May 1966. You may hear on the internet that Eric used a Dallas Rangemaster boost unit. This is in fact incorrect. Eric Clapton did not use a Rangemaster. In fact, the producer of the album, Mike Vernon, stated that no pedals were used whilst recording Eric's guitar. At that time, Eric was playing straight into an amplifier, guitar, cable and amp. And this was the same way Eric's heroes such as Freddie King played in Chicago. Eric describes how he got his sound from his Les Paul. To quote Eric, the Les Paul has two pickups, one at the end of the neck, giving the guitar a kind of round jazz sound, and the other next to the bridge, giving you the treble, most often used for the thin, typical rock and roll sound. What I would do was use the bridge pickup with all of the bass turned up, so the sound was very thick and on the edge of distortion. I also always used amps that would overload. I would have the amp on full, and I would have the volume on the guitar also turned up full, so everything was on full and overloading. I would hit a note, hold it, and give it some vibrato with my fingers until it sustained, and then the distortion would turn into feedback. It was all of these things, plus the distortion, that created what I suppose you would call my sound. Eric's first pedal was a wah wah, which he used with the band Cream. Cream were recording their album, Disraeli Gears, at Atlantic Studios in New York between the 11th and 15th of May 1967. Tales of Brave Ulysses, with lyrics written by a friend of Eric's, an illustrator called Martin Sharp, was released as the B-side of Strange Brew in June 1967, and it featured imaginative use of a new Wah Wah pedal. Eric had acquired it only that morning from Manny's Instrument Shop on 48th Street, and it actually predated Jimi Hendrix's similar Wah Wah usage on the song Burning of a Midnight Lamp, which was a single release in August 1967. The lyrics were inspired by Homer's Odyssey. Martin Sharp later explained they had recently returned from Ibiza, the source of many images of the song. Eric, meanwhile, had been writing a tune based on a descending chord sequence, when just by luck, Martin Sharp gave Eric the words written on the back of a beer mat. Eric used a Vox V847A wah wah pedal. Eric also used the wah pedal on the track White Room from the album Wheels of Fire. The wah wah is the one pedal that Eric Clapton has consistently used throughout his career, right up until today. And through the years he's used various models such as the Jim Dunlop Crybaby and also various incarnations of the Vox wah. Clapton was asked by an interviewer, it sounds like you are using a fuzz tone on tunes like Outside Woman Blues and Schwabe. Clapton replied, we used to trip down to Manny's every day and pick up whatever was new. That's how I got my first wah wah. Jimmy was knocking around New York then too, and we used to trade things. I have no idea how many gadgets were passing through the studio then, but it may have been straight, with a Marshall full up. In those days, it would get that quality. According to other sources who were present at the Disraeli Gears recording session, there were no fuzz boxes. The main sounds came from his fingers, combined with the guitar and the amp settings. The song Badge was written by Eric Clapton and George Harrison, and it was recorded on Cream's final album, Goodbye. It was recorded in October 1968. Harrison remembered the story. I help Eric write Badge, you know. Each of them had to come up with a song for the Goodbye Cream album, and Eric didn't have his written. We were working across from each other, and I was writing the lyrics down, and we came to the middle part, so I wrote Bridge. Eric read it upside down and cracked up laughing. What's badge, he says. After that, Ringo walked in drunk and gave us that line about the swans living in the park. Harrison played rhythm guitar on the song Badge. However, he was credited as Leangelo Misterioso. As for contractual reasons, he could not be identified. Clapton's distinctive guitar sound on Badge was a result of putting his guitar through a Leslie cabinet. Harrison says... On the record, Eric doesn't play guitar up until that bridge. He sat through it with his guitar in the Leslie. And I think Felix Papaladi was a piano player. 
So there was Felix, Jack Bruce, Ginger Baker and me. I played the rhythm chops. And we played the song right up until the bridge. At which point Eric came in on the guitar with the Leslie. And then he overdubbed the solo later. Clapton's biographer, Harry Shapiro, described how Clapton came to use the Leslie speaker. By the time the studio tracks for Goodbye were recorded, Eric was fed up with playing the fastest acts in the West game at maximum volume and was experimenting with his amplification. On badge and doing that scrapyard thing, Eric played his guitar through a Leslie cabinet, normally used in conjunction with an electric organ. The rotary paddle located at the top of the cabinet gave a swirling Doppler effect to the sound. Eric played through a Leslie on the song Presence of the Lord on the Blind Faith album. You can also hear Eric playing through a Leslie on the song Well All Right. In July 1969, Blind Faith performed in Toronto. And as we can see in this photo, Eric Clapton is using some pedals. We can see his signal chain is going into a Wah Wah pedal first and then into a Univibe. Okay, let's talk about the silver wedge shape pedal first. Leslie developed a chrome wedge shaped pedal that would allow any audio signal to be connected to a Leslie speaker. So the quarter inch jack input meant that you could just plug your guitar straight through a Leslie speaker. This particular stomp box had two quarter inch jack inputs, separate volume control knobs and a foot controlled fast slow button and a yellow light for tremolo indication, a red light for power and of course the six pin socket where the Leslie cable was plugged into. Also mounted on the box was a line cord both for supplying the combo preamps internal circuitry with power and passing power onto the Leslie cabinet through the six pin connector. So this concept could well be the first time Eric experimented using a real Leslie cabinet on stage for a live performance. Also amongst these pedals on the floor is a Univibe. It could well be that Eric Clapton was comparing the sound of using a real Leslie cabinet as opposed to using the Univibe unit. Again we can see the use of the Vox Wah Wah pedal. Here we can see Derek and the Dominoes performing in London in 1970. Here we can see Eric using his brownie strat through a Vox Wah Wah pedal. We can also see Eric using the Vox Wah on the Johnny Cash show in 1970. In 1976 Eric was using a Leslie cabinet with a JBL speaker. Along with this he had a special foot switch for fast and slow speeds and also for on and off positions. The guitar could either go through the Music Man amp or through the Music Man amp and the Leslie or just through the Leslie. Along with this, Eric used a Crybaby Wah Wah. In this photo here from New York in 1984, we can see Eric's using a Crybaby Wah Wah. Steve Luthiker introduced Eric to the modern guitar effects of the 1980s. Clapton said in the Guitar Player magazine in 1985, in regards to the Roland G505 and GR700, I got the pedal board and the memory bank. The guitar is interchangeable. I bought the new model, G707, and couldn't play it because it kept sliding off my lap. So I got the one with the old Strat shape, the G505. And the electronics are more or less identical. And that inspired me, just picking it up and playing a chord. The Roland synth can be heard on Never Make You Cry from the Behind the Sun album, released in 1985. Eric Clapton had played lead guitar, backing vocals and the Roland guitar synth on Roger Waters' 1984 album, The Pros and Cons of Hitchhiking. And with the Roland setup, Eric embarked on the first tour with Roger. The other guitar player on that tour was Tim Renwick. Roger's a very different sort of person. I have tremendous respect for him. He's a very clever man, but he is very serious. When Eric and I toured with him, he wanted everything exactly the same as a record, which unfortunately kind of took the fun out of performing. The guitar would plug into the GR700 guitar synthesizer floor unit. This had 11 foot switches, memory, string select and dynamic controls and a display with multiple inputs and outputs. It also had the additional PG200 unit with multiple controls and also we can see here a GR300 polyphonic guitar synthesizer floor unit. This had 5 foot switches, 8 rotary controls and 10 switches. You can see Eric playing this Roland during the Behind the Sun tour in Austin, Texas on April 11th 1985. Let's check out Eric's 80s Bob Bradshaw rack system. In an interview in 1985, Clapton commented that he was using a pedal board with a bank of presets built for him by an engineer that worked with Steve Luthiker 
named Rob Bradshaw. Lukather met Clapton as part of the Los Angeles A-Team of studio musicians during the recording session there for the tracks to be included in the album Behind the Sun. This was a programmable foot switching system which would allow the user to pick out presets and punch them into the memory. The effects units in the rack consisted of an Ibanez harmonics delay, a DBX160 compressor, a model SDE3000 Roland delay, a Dino My Piano Tri Stereo Chorus. This unit had three choruses in one, and also a Boss CE1 Chorus and a Boss Heavy Metal pedal that Clapton heard Lukather using and liked. Clapton's tech at the time said Clapton used a bit of chorus, the CE1, and a dash of compression. This Bradshaw system was in use until 1989. Eric used the Bradshaw system during his Behind the Sun World Tour and the Live Aid appearance. In fact, the foot controller and rat cases were both visible on stage at the JFK Stadium in 1985. He also used it at the Nelson Mandela concert at Wembley Stadium with Dire Straits. Eric sat in with a house band on NBC's Late Night with David Letterman on the show on May the 8th, 1985. This was the first time that Eric had played White Room since the disbanding of Cream in 1968. After this, it was added to his regular set list. The effects that Eric used for this show were a Crybaby Wah Wah pedal, a Boss CE2 chorus, and a Boss DD2 delay. What's interesting about this show is Eric doesn't have any overdrive. For this show, Eric played through a Silverface Fender Twin amplifier. His tone tended to be on the clean side and he didn't have any noticeable overdrive to his guitar sound. Pete Cornish was contacted by Lee Dixon's Eric's Tech with the request to build a complete stereo touring system using the SLO100 amplifiers recently built for Eric by Mike Soldano and to include the effects which had been used in the recording studio and had been used previously in the Bradshaw rack. Pete noticed, with the exception of the wah pedal, all the effects were stereo rack devices requiring line level, input and output signals all at low impedance. For the Leslie speaker effect, Eric used a Dynacord CLS222 rack. This unit was made in Germany and featured the slow, fast and off Leslie speed control via the front panel. The rotor speed ramps up when started and down when stopped, just like a real Leslie. The entire system from the wireless transmitters that were once attached to Clapton's Versace guitar straps and the nine button foot controller to the purpose made mains power distributor, multi-core cables and the massive rack unit housing Cornish's routing system, the control center of the system, as well as the rack mount signal processors including the Dino My Piano Trisaurus Chorus and the EV loaded Marshall cabinets were sold as an entire setup, flight case and ready to go on a world tour. We start off with a drawer. 1960 vacuum tube compressor. This is a two channel unit. We have a Yamaha SPX50, which is a multi effects rack unit, which includes pitch bend panning, vibrato, parametric EQ compression, reverbs, chorus, flanger, phaser, and much more. Then we have a Dino My Piano Tri Stereo Chorus rack. Next, we have a TC2290 dynamic digital delay. Below this, we have a Dynacord. CLS222 Leslie Rotator Speaking Simulator Vibe Rack. Then we have a Yamaha GEP50's Guitar Effects Processor. This is basically a multi effects processor made for guitar. Then we have a Roland SDE3000 Digital Delay Effects Rack. The last item in the rack is a TC Electronics 1210 Spatial Expander and Stereo Chorus Flanger. The system defined Clapton's guitar sound between 1990 and 1994, the period of Clapton's return to forceful playing in grand scale rock shows, as chronicled by the album 24 Nights. Clapton used a nine button foot controller. Let's check out these two photos of Eric performing at Saturday Night Live. The first one is from 1990, and we can see here Eric has his Soldano amplifier and also his Pete Cornish pedal board. This would also indicate that he was using his effects rack. Let's have a look at another performance at Saturday Night Live. This time it's the 24th of September 1994. And as we can see here, although he still has the Soldano amplifier, Eric is no longer using an effects pedal board. This performance was to promote the From the Cradle album release. Around this time he was using a pedal to switch between the normal and overdrive channels on his Soldano amplifier. 
For Eric's 2004 tour, he used a tri stereo chorus, a Boss Chorus CE3, a Leslie pedal, and a Jim Dunlop 535 Crybaby Wah Wah pedal. He also had a switcher box to switch from the amp to the Leslie or to select both. It's worth pointing out that one reason Eric doesn't use an overdrive pedal is because obviously inside his Stratocaster guitar, he has a 25 dB boost. This was pretty much the same story when Eric did the Cream reunion shows. Along with his Leslie speaker, Eric used a Jimi Hendrix Wah Wah pedal and a box to switch from the amp to the Leslie or to select both. After this in 2006 for his world tour, Eric started to use a Boss TR2 tremolo pedal. He also went back to a Vox reissue Wah Wah pedal and as well the switcher box to switch from the Leslie to the amplifier. Since 2007, his setup has remained pretty consistent. He's using the Leslie speaker and the box to switch the Leslie on and off. And of course, his Wah Wah pedal, which sometimes is a Fox Wah Wah pedal and sometimes he uses the Dunlop Crybaby. Eric's guitar plugs into a switch pedal made by Mike Hill, which splits the signal. It divides into a Dunlop Crybaby GCB95F wah and to his amplifier. When the wah is engaged, that signal also goes to a Hammond Leslie 122XB rotary speaker. Guys, I just want to say thank you so much for reaching the end of this video. It really means a lot to me. Um, we're going to be doing a video very soon next week, so be sure to keep up to date with the guitar show. And also, don't forget, I've mentioned it at the beginning, <clears throat> the Patreon site where I've got a new blues course, which I'm uploading two or three videos a week, as I said. And you can even submit if you want me to show you a lesson or two. I can do that, whatever, whatever we need to do to get us learning some great blues guitar. So until the next video, guys, thanks so much. God bless you all and see you at the next video.